Today I'm going to show you something that has never been seen in Power BI, or at least you haven't seen it in Power BI. The reason why I can say that is because I have been looking for this kind of solution for a long time and haven't seen it done. What I'm going to show you is how you can stack parameters in a way to build out a Monte Carlo simulation without any data at all. And this has been really useful because we have built this at Arcos Analytics for many other previous clients in order for them to articulate logic about the likelihood of specific outcomes happening in the future. We built out these kinds of models for directors, managers, and executives for anything involving prediction of sales, prediction of outcomes when it comes to patients, predicting uh, any organizational change, etc. So I'm going to show you how to build out a Monte Carlo simulation in Power BI and how you can stack parameters in order to articulate the logic that you want to articulate. Fundamentally, when we're looking at a Monte Carlo simulation, what we're looking at is we're looking at a series of parameters that then are used to predict specific outcomes in the future. So what I did in this model was I wanted to know just on a personal level if a specific disease becomes an epidemic or not, and what is the likelihood of that happening. And so in order to do so, I did a lot of research about how people measure and predict epidemics, and then how I could mimic specific pieces of that logic in order to predict those outcomes. There's no data I imported at all, and this is primarily based on a stack of parameters and measures that are built in Power BI. One of the coolest things is that in Power BI, you can build parameters, and a parameter is just a way in which you can import and or create a virtual table that lives in Power BI that um, gives you a minimum and maximum and an incremental level. So for example, my R0 value here is an incremental level at which I'm saying my R0 is between 0 and 20, that increments by 0.01. What an R0 value is, is it's the value at which if one person is infected, it affects other people. And this is one of the base measures that I use in order to predict outcomes when it comes to diseases. And so an R0 value of like, let's say, Two, which is what the major pandemic previously was. It was like a little bit over two. You can look at any articles predicting that and or explaining what that R0 value is. But if you have an R0 value of two, then you can start to predict for a specific population size, let's say a population size of two million, um, what your number of fatalities and your number of total cases will be. Likewise, your at-risk population and how it goes down over time as the number of cases go up with the assumption that people don't get infected and or can't die twice. The same for those who are immune. There's an immunity count as far as if half of the population are immune, what does that mean for the total number of cases and fatalities? The same for the number of travelers coming in and out and what percentage of those travelers are infected. Lastly, there's a fatality rate that is used to predict the fatalities here. And all of these that I'm explaining here are using parameters as the base level of the calculation. And so any calculations are based on these parameters. And these parameters are built in order to build out measures on top of them. And so one of the most fundamental things I did was I said, okay, I've got my R0 value, but I want to predict if my R0 value uh, has any change in the future and how that will affect the likelihood of pandemics happening in the future. So this R0 value is essentially the percentage change at which one person will affect somebody else in the future and is used in order to derive the total number of cases and the no number of new cases every day, as well as the number of fatalities. And so for fatalities, for example, you can start to see that I have a fatality value here, which is my fatality value that is derived from this fatality rate, multiplied by the total number of cases. Likewise, you can have something like an at-risk population, which is used for predicting the at-risk population going down, 
and I have here the address population minus the total number of cases. There are other metrics here, but what I wanted to show you was is that there are base level uh, measures that are used for other measures to build on top of. And so in this way, what I'm doing is I'm trying to take the logic in my head about what I have researched about epidemics and then put it down in a way that can be easily articulated and then easily manipulated. And so I can go here on any given day and say, oh, there's this new disease coming out. What are they saying the r not value is for this new disease? Um, what are the total number of cases? So if it broke out, let's say, in New York, what are the total number of cases? Like usually it's like 250 or 100 or whatever in Europe. And then I can start to use these as base parameters so that I can get a general understanding of where a specific disease will go. What it does for me is it helps me mitigate fear, right? Because I can look at this and say, oh, okay, these are some likelihoods that will happen based on these specific uh, parameters that have been set. And CEOs, directors, and managers really love this kind of model. And I can say so from experience. You can have a manager that spends 30 minutes every day or every month or every quarter just kind of playing with different parameters and seeing what will happen if they do this or that or the other. And it's kind of interesting because you can do a lot with a limited number of measures and parameters here. And you can start to show the likelihood of different things happening. I can go in further detail, but what I will explain in this video is that you can start to build out these parameters and start to build out logic based on your own preferences. And if you want to know how I built it out here, you can go to arcosanalytics.com slash free Monte Carlo, where we post this for free. You'll go to a landing page where you enter your in your email, and then from that, then you can access this Power BI file. Now we won't spam you or message you with any unwanted information, but we will do our best to send you any future models that we develop and any new findings that we have in analytics and in healthcare. If you have any questions about this model or any future models, feel free to reach out to us at uh, personally at Caleb at arcosanalytics.com or you can go and you can access this model yourself by going to arcosanalytics.com slash free Monte Carlo. Thanks for watching and I hope this was insightful in helping you understand how to build out your own Monte Carlo simulations and stack parameters in a way that helps you identify and articulate the logic that you already have in your head.